Okay, so this is a bit of breaking news, and if you're into earth caches, you're probably going to want to watch the video all the way to the end. All right, so I got some good news, and I've got some bad news. The earth cache purge is upon us again, and it looks like it's already started. And in this video, I'm going to go over everything that I know and some actions that you can potentially take. All right, so what's this purge that I'm talking about? In April of last year, geocaching headquarters flagged those cache owners who have been inactive for more than five years. If that was the case, if you hadn't logged in in over five years, the earth caches were then flagged and a message was sent saying, hey, you basically need to log in. And if you don't, within the next 30 days, we're going to disable your earth cache. Now, 30 days passed by, and if you still hadn't logged in, another email went out and said, okay, you've basically got another 30 days. Otherwise, we're going to uh, archive your earth cache. So 60 days in total. Now, it, this is all based on the inactivity of the cache owner, not whether or not the earth cache was a lonely cache. So you and I, we could go find the cache, but if the earth cache owner hasn't logged in in five years, well, then it was going to get flagged. So headquarters never said if this was going to be an annual thing. They didn't say one way or another, but it does look like this is going to be an annual event. Why do it? All right, so headquarters is looking to keep the game board fresh and well-maintained. And when it comes to earth caches, there is a requirement, right? The maintenance for an earth cache is to respond to those that find your earth caches. So you find one of my earth caches, I'm supposed to send you a message back saying, hey, great job, great answers, or maybe maybe you missed the mark on one or two and, and, and here you go. Here was the experience I was trying to get to you. Um, so if you're inactive, you're unable to maintain the required maintenance. So the impact is going to be that we're going to lose some earth caches. Now, how many remains to be seen? And last year, headquarters did not release the total number that were archived. The website does say, and I quote, in 2024, only 1% to 2% of earth caches worldwide were impacted. In 2025, less than 1% of earth caches are impacted. So that's going to mean somewhere between 400 and 500 earth caches worldwide are going to get impacted. Now, I keep a rough track of earth caches located in the south. And here is what I'm anticipating the losses could be by state. So Arkansas, Georgia, Louisiana, North and South Carolina, and West Virginia shouldn't lose any. Mississippi could lose one. Alabama and Virginia could lose two each. Florida and Tennessee could lose five each. And I went down the rabbit hole a little bit more on some of them. And it looks like Utah, Hawaii, and Arizona could lose a minimum of five each. And California looks like you're slated to lose at least 158, which would be 13% of the total earth caches in that state. Now, of course, all of this could change if the owners respond. And what's always crazy is that that number, especially that California number, um, right? 173 to be exact over, you know, the, the course of one cacher has written or has adopted 173 earth caches, right? That in and of itself is 2% of the total number of earth caches in the U.S., now, on one hand, uh, I'm, I'm kind of conflicted. On one hand, I think it's awesome that a single person has created or adopted again so many. But on the other hand, if something happens to that person, you're going to have a huge loss for the community overall. So if anybody out there knows Terry Dad 2 and can contact them, um, that would be great. That would uh, hold off, again, a huge number of Earth caches lost. And it looks like Terry Dead 2 was just an absolute beast when it comes to Earth Caches. Uh, and I wish them well. I hope that they are okay. Because again, it feels like they were a very strong, they are a very strong part of the geocaching, especially their Earth Caching community. Right? You don't create or adopt 
that many earth caches uh, without just loving uh, giving back to the community writ large. A key question has to be answered, can those earth caches be recreated? And the simple answer is maybe. Um, if you think about it, the geology has not changed, but the guidelines have. Now I'm gonna read and paraphrase from a message that GeoAware USA9, he's one of the earth cache reviewers, that he posted on the earth cache forum from the purge last year. So starting the paraphrase, please keep in mind, the following if you are planning to redo a now archived earth cache. The earth cache must meet all current guidelines, including having visited the site recently and obtained permission for the earth cache from the land manager if required. The write-up must be in your own words, not a copy paste from the original page. New logging tasks are required so that the geocachers would need to revisit this site if they wish to log a, f a new find or find on the new earth cache not just resubmit the same answers from their previous visit. This doesn't mean just old task plus a recent photo. This means observation tasks tied to your lesson. So that's it. So just like last year, if you're going to start from scratch, right, the reviewers are going to be on the lookout for those that might just want to do the whole copy and paste from the previous lesson. So I certainly do not recommend that course of action. So here are some recommendations. You might want to go look to see if any of the earth caches around you are going to be affected. And you'll know because you'll see a note from headquarters dated 9 June. Now, if they are, you may want to go find them right before they go away. And if you're interested in recreating them, I would either make a note of the GC code because you'll still be able to pull that up or you can potentially copy the description into a Word doc or a Google doc and pay particular note if it has the sources listed. Again, I am not advocating that you just simply try to recreate that earth cache uh, with uh, the, you know, copying and pasting the, uh, the description. Again, the earth cache reviewers are going to be looking for that. Uh, and again, like GeoWare USA 9 said, if you're looking to create that one, uh, you're going to need to have been at Ground Zero within two months um, of your submission. And of course, you're going to have to wait until the previous Earth Cache has been archived if it's on the same topic. Um, if and when you go to Ground Zero, a pro tip would be when you're there to start thinking through some uh, potential tasks, right? That's always something that I do. Uh, and you got to remember that your tasks are going to have to be tied to observation and analysis at ground zero. And another pro tip is I'm a huge fan when I'm creating my earth caches of taking just a ton of photos, maybe a wider one out, and then I start to get in and then I start to get in because that will help me as I'm trying to create my tasks to remember what exactly I saw. So it'll help, trust me. Um, and again, remember that you're gonna have to get permission from the landowner or the land manager prior to submission. All right, so the purge is here. It appears that it's gonna be annual and that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? Done properly, the only maintenance you should have to do for an earth cache is to respond to those folks that find your stuff. Of course, you're going to have to remain up to speed if something happens to the area around it, maybe some kind of catastrophic weather event, or I've also seen this where there's a policy change to permission. So earth caches are not necessarily just publish and forget them. And if you think about, you know, those four or 500 that we may lose across the, the U.S., some of those may have contained those crazy logging tasks that we all absolutely love to hate and that new earth caches may very well rise in their place and they're going to have to follow the new task guidelines and so you know they may come with a better lesson and or better tasks along the way so while i hate to see four to five hundred uh, earth caches get archived across the uh, the world uh, i know that others are going to take their place 
And if you are interested in creating one, but perhaps you've never done so before, don't forget there is a playlist that is a crash course on how to create an earth cache from start to finish. Uh, it includes all of the updated guidance as well as the pro tips and tricks. Now, if you prefer something with a little more interaction, uh, I got you covered as well. If you're part of a group, feel free to reach out to me and we can set something up because I can teach the class remotely. Or if you're not part of the group, but you still want a more interactive experience, I am teaching the EarthCache Writing 101 class for the first time via live stream here on YouTube on July 12th. Would love to have you join me. So plenty of options to suit your learning styles and learning needs. And if you need some sort of other support, feel free to reach out.